Welcome to this video essay on Metro Last Light Visual and Audio Aesthetics, Building Atmosphere in Video Games by Andrew Sinclair. Throughout this video you will see footage captured from Metro Last Light set in post-apocalyptic Moscow, Russia after a nuclear war occurs in 2013. Fast forward to 2034, you play a character named Artum, who was a small child when the war happened, now a member of the Sparta Ranger Order that is sworn to protect the Metro from all threats, including mutants, the Dark Ones, or warring even factions like the Reds or the Fourth Reich. The remnants of humanity have called the Metro Line Station their home for 20 years since the bombs fell, unable to live on the surface in the now dead city of Moscow. Metro Last Light is the second game in the Metro video game series based on the award-winning post-apocalyptic science fiction book series that began with Russian author Dmitry Gohovsky's Metro 2033. Metro Last Light, through the developer's use of aesthetics, creates a highly detailed atmosphere with its visuals and sounds featuring a color palette with an interesting mix of vibrant and desaturated darks and grays that build an engrossing game atmosphere roamed by creatures and the player. The game's sound and music design are extensive and nuanced, making the world feel like a natural, living, breathing place complete with creatures scurrying and flying around that is, at the same time, strange, beautiful, wondrous, and deadly. At the same time, as well moving our tomb, you can hear his footsteps splashing through the bog and brushing past grass that make the player's presence feel grounded in the world. Aesthetics are important as part of creating a game's atmospheric tone. Last Light's standout color palette can be seen in the marsh section with its use of a vibrant green color palette of overgrown lush green vegetation and a clear bright sky this goes counter to many modern military historical and post-apocalyptic settings of first person shooters as there was a general trend towards an overuse of color palettes that relied on a desaturated color palette that many trace back to the film Saving Private Ryan as a major influence in games. The sky in Metro Last Light is blue and inviting, but creatures called demons fly through the skies, part bat, part lion. Docile, two vicious creatures also scuttle along the ground in the lush marsh and resemble shrimps that also live in the flooded metro tunnels. There are also red flags in the swamp to guide the player safely through. In the swamp, the player encounters a giant shrimp creature that, unlike the lush green grass, has these sick green growths on its shell. It gets into a fight with one of these demon creatures stalking the swamp as the player waits for a raft to proceed through the swamp to the church. Metro has a highly detailed soundscape with sound effects walking through grass, uh, far off gunshots that suggest other survivors being in the area, footsteps, creatures moving around, demons flapping their wings in the background, and the game's subtle soundtrack. The player also has to manage their health, prevent their mask from breaking, charge their flashlights, count, uh, manage their ammo, other resources, for example, the player Artum wheezes and begins to make labor breaths, which indicates that new filters are needed, and a timer wristwatch that indicates remaining air visually and with sound effects. Metro, through its aesthetics, both visual and auditory, depicts a lush, beautiful ruined surface world reclaimed by nature growing around the dead city of Moscow. That beauty is deceptive, though, because everywhere there are deadly creatures, pockets of radiation, and the very air is poisonous as well, not to mention all the infighting between the various factions in the Metro. Metro Last Light's developer uses the game's visual and audio Metro Last Light's developer uses the game's visuals and audio to develop an experience that allows the developer to develop supernatural horror elements that invoke the idea of Kalwas' concept of Ilix or Vertigo that messes with the player's sense of perception, causing a sense of panic as the player Artum notice the mutants and dark ones he kills are morphing into humans representing that he has misgivings about destroying the dark ones home with a missile strike 
as can be seen in the opening dream sequence of Last Light. In Metro Last Light, two of the factions in the Metro represent the political left and right, a resurgent communist state, the Reds, and a fascist regime, the Fourth Reich, both invoke the imagery of the USSR and the Third Reich in the sections of the game where the player character has a run-in with these two factions in the Metro series. A faction's power is based on the stations and the Metro lines they control. Our Tomb's faction, the Rangers of the Order, are also known as Spartan or or Order, are a group whose main goal is to protect the Metro as a whole. They are made up of mostly scientists and military personnel based around the Polis Metro Station. The other major faction is the Hansa, a capitalist trade-oriented faction that occupy a ring line that circles the entire inner metro system. The use of the powerful imagery of these ideologies is interesting in that even in a destroyed world, ideology does not disappear for the sake of survival. Humanity is still killing itself over rallying to opposing ideologies in a harsh world where humanity has denied itself the surface through nuclear destruction inherited by a new creation of life, the mutants and the dark ones. Now humans desperately grip for a greater purpose in what remains the metro. For many that means the hands of the Reds or the Nazis, all while the aptly named Spartan Order struggle to protect the metro from all that would threaten. For all the metro inhabitants know, this is humanity's last refuge. This has been a video essay on the atmospheric aesthetics in Metro Last Night and the importance of aesthetics in building a game world. What do you want? A new break. Super Duke What the hell are you doing here then? Go get them! Over here! Yes, sir. Comrade Moskvin is here, inspecting the troops. The Secretary General here? What about Comrade Corbin? Yes, sir. Comrade General is here, too. Opa, it's my lucky day, huh? Okay, things are moving faster than we anticipated. Look, until. You're a smart guy, so we understand there is no such thing as coincidence. You are here because we need you. Information. So, my advice to you, my friend? Cool. Okay. But don't worry, I got your back. Because we are what? Musketeers! One for one, and one for all. But your comrades in the order, their motto is all for us. War is coming, my friend. That bunker you guys found, whoever controls it survives and fuck the rest of us. But we have been preparing for this. And I want you to join us. Good day, Comrade General. Comrade Morozov. I was beginning to think you had not survived your mission. I was captured, Comrade Corbett. This ranger here, uh, saved me. What a coincidence. He's Nitsky, or one of the Spartan rangers. Do you know this man? Yes, sir. His name is Artyom. Miller trusts him. They found the six together. He's also earned several commendations since officially enlisting with the order. Well, I am overjoyed to meet you, Comrade Artyom. I think we both have something to offer. Take the comrade to the negotiation room.